and I am currently a high school senior and I ran Code Up, which was a four-week web development program that I taught in an orphanage in Cambodia. So you might be wondering, what's my connection to Cambodia? Well, my brother and I are both adopted and he's from Cambodia and we've been in contact with his family since we were little and we've been going back to Cambodia every two or so years to visit them. So this is a photo of me and my brother when I was six um, at Angkor Wat. And um, on our trip in 2013, I met my cousin's best friend who was very interested in pursuing computer science at university. However, she had never had any exposure to it. She didn't really know what computer science was. She had never coded. Um, so I thought, well, these students are really, really smart here. And I've been coding since first grade just because I've had the opportunity to do so, um, being here, having the resources, laptops, computers, things like that. So I thought that, well, there are three key ingredients to learning how to code and being introduced to the tech industry. And those are, one, a laptop, two, Wi-Fi, and three, just somebody to introduce you and point you towards the right resources, um, as I've been mostly self-taught myself. Additionally, the Cambodia tech industry is really about to explode. Um, there population is 15.6 million, and the number of registered cell phones is 19 million. So there is a huge demand for um, these types of skills. However, because most people don't have computers, there aren't a lot of people who are able to code. Um, because now, with smartphones and tablets, most things that you would normally do on a computer can be done on um, a smartphone. Um, so. One of Cambodia's largest industries is the garment production industry, which only recently increased their monthly wage to $80. That's under $1,000 a year. In comparison, a Cambodian web developer can charge $200 or more per website. So if they work on three commissions per month, that's over $7,000 a year, which is huge in comparison. Um, so I came back to the United States following that trip, and I had this idea, well, maybe I could teach them, maybe I could bring them these resources that they need. However, um, I was only a junior in high school. I had never had any formal training in tech. I was completely self-taught, um, and I just wasn't sure if I could pull it off. It really was a crazy idea. So I wrote to my teacher from a summer tech program and I asked her, do you think this is possible? Is, am I completely insane? Should I wait to do it? I'm not sure. And she said, well, I've been working in tech for 10 years and I really never know what I'm doing. Um, so all you need to do is try. You don't need to be an expert. Um, so I thought about that, and I thought it was actually really relevant to the tech industry, because if you wait to be an expert at something, the tech industry has already moved on, and like whatever you become an expert in is more or less obsolete. Um, so I thought, well, the worst thing that can happen is that I fail, and this program is like a flop, and it doesn't work. But the best thing that could happen is that I'd be able to teach a whole new group of students who could go on and teach others in Cambodia how to code as well. So I remembered this quote by my orchestra conductor, and he said, if you're going to fail, at least fail spectacularly. So then I started my Indiegogo campaign. Um, Indiegogo is an online crowdfunding platform. So my time was spent writing pitches, emailing people, um, developing the curriculum, doing all of that organization um, that I had to learn on the fly as I realized that it was not all about your coding skills, but it was really a lot more organization. Um, and, well, I had to choose priorities because I launched my curriculum in May which was spring of my junior year. 
So being educators, you all probably know that your junior year is one of the most important years in your high school career as that's mostly the year that colleges look at. Um, so I was trying to decide whether I should prioritize my Indiegogo campaign or really prioritize my junior year. Um, but I decided that in the end, tests only affect myself and I really needed to prioritize Indiegogo as I could actually improve the lives of my 24 students. And, oh wait, sorry. And my Indiegogo campaign was a huge success. I raised $21,000 within a month from 124 donors. <laughs> One of the big steps that I had to make was actually designing the curriculum and I, having never had any formal training, I don't really know how computer science class is taught. However, um, I do know how I learned, and that was very project-based, very experimental, um, reaching out to people within the tech community asking, do you know how to do this? I'm, I'm stuck. And um, so I really modeled the curriculum after that. It was very project-based, the students worked together. Um, and then it all culminated in final projects. So the next step was to go to Cambodia and teach. There were a few surprises along the way though. First of all, I ended up teaching alone, which was slightly terrifying to me having never had any teaching experience. And um, I had co-teachers lined up, but one after another they ended up not being able to go. And that was very difficult. Um, additionally, our money got delayed, and we ended up not getting the money until the day before class started. And we had not gotten laptops yet, but it all worked out in the end, and we started on time. Additionally, in my class, the English levels were very varied. So there was definitely a large challenge in overcoming that language barrier, which leads me to my next section. So this is a picture of two of my students and the computer skills teacher at the orphanage who act we actually hired to help translate all of the concepts that they weren't quite getting in English. Um, I had 24 students split into two classes and I taught six hours a day, six days a week. Um, half were girls and half were boys and that was something that was very important to me having been really involved in the like women in tech, women in engineering community um, because there's a huge gap in the number of women and the number of men that work in this industry. Um, also, my students were between the ages of 15 and 20. And the funniest thing that happened during the class was that it came out that I'm actually only older than one of my students. So. That was definitely something that they found very amusing. Um, yeah. The thing that I appreciated the most for my students was that they were really helpful. The tech community, unlike what a lot of people might think about it, is very collaborative. Um, and my students were great about helping each other out. Students from my morning class would come in and help explain concepts to my afternoon class. And um, in between times, they would talk about different concepts that they weren't quite understanding. Um, this process might be familiar to some of you guys. Um, listen, do, and teach. So first, my students would listen to me lecture about whatever we were doing that day. And then second, they would have to experiment themselves with the concept. And then they would have to teach somebody else. And this really helped lock in um, their new knowledge. So this is what our class looked like on a normal day. Um, they were, at this point, they were all working on their final projects, which were um, based off of these client profiles that I gave them. And so they had to develop um, a fully functional website based off of the profile, which was modeled after a potential like interview that you would give a real life client. So it would tell them who their client is, what their business does, who works there, who their customers are, things like that. And in the end, they had to present their projects 
to a live stream of the donors. And I was so proud of my students because by the end, they had all completed their projects. They, um, the websites worked. They designed them themselves. And the best thing about it was that one of my students ended up actually integrating parts of code that I had never taught him. I pointed him towards the resources, but he really learned how to learn by himself, which was one of the key concepts that I wanted to focus on because much of their learning will happen after I leave. Um, I really, my plan was to give them the basics, but really to point them towards the resources that they need to continue learning. So this was our class on our graduation day, um, right after they presented their projects. And um, it was, everybody was so happy. And it's hard to put into words how I felt. I was just so proud of them. But um, now at the orphanage, there is an advanced class that's continuing their learning. And in terms of code up, I'm looking to how this program can be expanded to other parts of Cambodia, to reach more students, to even go into other countries. Um, but it's all very still a work in progress. So thank you. And if you have any questions, you can tweet me. <laughs>